Hi everyone, it's Jennifer Meyer with Master of the Magic, and I am wanting to share with you my first, and at the moment, really only complete-ish uh, Disney vacation um, scrapbook. So I have been um, a Disney fan ever since we took our kids back on our first trip in 2012. This, this album is four. We have been back several times since uh, Disney Cruise, and I am now a travel agent, and I specialize in, um, in Disney um, cruises uh, and, and others, all-inclusives, but for sure Disney. So I thought maybe I would just show you what this album looks like. It's 95-ish percent complete. And as we go through it, uh, maybe you'll learn some tips and tricks for your upcoming trip. So um, again, Jennifer Meyer with Master the Magic. And this is a trip um, we first took in 2012. And our children at that time were, um, let's see, just turning, they were two two, four, and five. Yes. So my daughter was in kindergarten and here's how this trip kind of came about. We um, were doing some, some medical things and I thought, gosh, you know, if things don't turn out quite right, it will be a while before we go to Disney. And we had been at um, a preschool gathering and there was another boy in my son's class who had just gone to Disney and one of the other teachers thought it was us. And I said, oh, no, it'll be 10 years before we go to Disney. Well, my daughter heard that and this is what happened. So you're, we'll see at that point. So uh, this is an album. I don't know. I think I probably got it at Michael's or Joanne's or, or something like that. It did come with some pages on the inside, but then I cricketed out um, the labeling for the for the front cover, which I think is a great idea to personalize your album. Um, so that's what I, that's how I got this here. All right. So we'll be opening up. This is our title page. Um, and, you know, again, I love to start an album with uh, a nice 8x10 of, of the destination. So just a couple little cutouts and a, some nice fun paper back there. Um, moving on, this is kind of where this trip hap started from. And this was a letter or a note that my daughter, who was running errands with her father uh, on a Saturday, had written down. So this would have been probably the very end of April 20, uh, 2012. And she came into the house. She handed me this note. I read it and I burst into tears, which is pretty much what this journaling says over here. So um, I, my husband was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I said, you know what she's, what she wrote? And he said, no, she's been asking me to spell stuff all day, you know? So um, they were in the car for a while. And I said, she is saying that if you were six, so you must have been six, if you were six and you were going somewhere and you had to wait 10 years, you will be 16. So this was on April 21st. Thank goodness I wrote the date on there. And, um, you know, so at that point in time, I was like, oh gosh, we, if we do have to wait 10 years to go, she will be 16. And I thought that's just too old to go to your first time to Disney. I think I was probably eight or 10 when I went as a child. And then my husband and I went before we had children. And so I thought, gosh, if she is 16, by the time she gets to meet those princesses, that's just going to be a shame. So I asked my neighbor, one of my scrapbooking friends, and I said, you know, I used to laugh at them. Oh, my gosh, you're always scrapbooking these trips. You're spending so much money. Why would you want to spend that much money to go to a hamburger and ride some rides? And uh, I said, you know, this is what's going on. And she's like, you should go. And so literally we booked our trip and we went, I called my doctors. They said, this is fine. You just be back by this date. And it was great. So we booked it and we went 13 days later. It was, it was great. So so this was the letter that she wrote us, and then we we kind of told our kids, uh, and my husband, um, Costco, at the time anyways, had these art prints that you could print, and they were no more, um, it was the same price as, the, price as an 8x10 print, so like it's like $1.99 or something like that. So he found this Disney one, and then we mounted it to chipboard, and we made a puzzle. So we had this as part of telling the kids, we had them put together a puzzle to tell them about the trip. Um, and that's where we get into the semi-finished, not so finished. So over here, I still have to put some pictures in of when the kids, we had them open up a box um, full of balloons. And then attached to the balloons, I had made these prints. Um, I just photoshopped their names on. And it said, Maddie, Evan, and Allie, we can't wait to see you at Disney World. And then they were tied to some helium balloons that we had put inside a big giant box. 
So I, I do need to get, I think my dad has the photos from that. So I do need to get the pictures to go on the side. And then this was, after we did tell the kids, Maddie had made a, um, a calendar. And the rainbow day was the day that we were to leave for Disney, which was uh, Friday the 11th of May. So moving on, um, back in the day, you could get these really nice maps. Um, it was an interactive planning tool on the Disney website where you could get personalized maps that would help you decide where to go and what to do. And now that I'm a travel agent, I can be your map. So I can tell you where to go and what to do. But it was kind of based on the ages of your children. And then they would print up and send you these is this a spell binding tips for the Myers and it gives you all sorts of you know tips and things to do while you're there and then you know I remember going through and putting in the ages of our kids and it kind of gave us the special things that we should do at each of the parks and I thought this was great they don't do this anymore they do some other things um, you know technology has has certainly you know changed in the years since we did our very first trip to Disney but again as a travel agent doesn't cost you any more to book through a travel agent, and uh, we can help you with all sorts of personalized trip tips and touring plans. So that was something that we had ordered. So, of course, the day of the trip comes, and here we are. We are at the airport. Um, I think we, I'm trying to remember which airline. We flew Southwest, I think it was. Oh, I'm sure the tickets are here someplace. So my biggest tip, people, your children will be hungry all the time and we did bring peanut butter and jelly sandwiches i remember our flight was um pretty early as says papa lyle drove us to the airport at oh dark hundred our flight left at 7 20 so we were there by six and um so we had brought peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that's what they want for breakfast have them because i don't even think some of the things were open that early so oh when we landed the flight attendants started singing s-o-u-t-h-w-e-s-t to the mickey mouse clubhouse song and it was really funny um so, yeah, uh, I remember my son saying, and this is you hear someplace saying, oh, mom, thank goodness they have a map on the plane so that the pilot knows how to get to Florida. I just the things that they think of while you're traveling. It's amazing. So, again, just plain photos of the kids on the on the flight. Um, when we arrived at the Orlando airport, if you haven't been there yet, they do have a number of Disney things that you can pose with. So, so we kind of did that. And, you know, of course we decked the kids out in her Tinkerbell backpacks. And this was our magical express, uh, luggage tags and things like that. So I saved those and put them in here. Um, this was my little one at the time. She was very excited. So. Uh, here we go on the Magical Express bus and then at our hotel. So again, you know, before Magic Bands, uh, you would get these um, tickets or um, your cards, which were your your charging, your park entrance and things like that. So we have four of those. My youngest was uh, she was under uh, she was not she didn't need a ticket. She was so little. So there we are. So I put those in here your castle picture again some journaling so my youngest she was so excited to get on a disney bus she could hardly contain herself which is very cute this happened every day every time we got on a disney bus it was her highlight of the trip was the free transportation so again from your children you might have spent hundreds of dollars on that disney ticket and they're just gonna like the free bus that takes them to the park so these were some images from our first day. This was like a little layered Jolie's sticker that I had. Um, also, you know, take pictures of different things and you can cut them out and put them in your layouts, which I thought was cool. Um, so the parades. Oh, my God. It Disney, uh, Disney, they've cut back a lot on their parades, which is, which is, you know, sad. But, you know, there's other things to do now. So this was one of the parades that, that we went to. And I love this. This I think I got from a company called Creek Big Creations at one of our um, scrapbook expos, but it's a great way, this is before I started pocket scrapbooking, this is a great way to put on a ton of Disney photos on a spread without taking up too much space. So, so these were some of the highlights from the parade that we saw on that trip. And then of course the kids picked up all the little confetti things and we had to save those too. So, and then this was pattern paper. I just cut it out and cut some titles on the Cricut. And so there we go. Again, more parades, more confetti. All right, so uh, one of the breakfasts, or actually I think it was a, uh, I think it was a lunch we did, and that was um, 
at the uh, Crystal Palace. So it is a Winnie the Pooh uh, buffet. And so it's Pooh and Piglet and Tigger and Eeyore. So I just kind of put all these things in here. And they were so great. They came and spent some time with the kids. Um, and then this was in a really old paper pack that I had gotten, which had all of these things printed on it already. I was glad to be able to use that. Here we are in the People Mover Castle Show. This is actually printed on the scrapbook paper. Um, and then, oh, the Disney's Electrical Nighttime Parade, which I remember from when I was there as a child. So um, it has been uh, off and on the couple of times we've been at Disney. We actually, um, this parade ended in uh, Florida a couple of years ago, and then we did see it last year when we were at Disneyland. It was nice to see that again. So, um, you know, just kind of a lot of bling. We bought glow sticks. Bring your own glow sticks. We... We took a ton of them, and I remember we were coming back one night. It wasn't this night, but everybody was on the bus, and it had rained, and all the kids were tired, and, and we just started handing them out to everybody, and uh, and they loved it. So uh, let's see. So this was another character breakfast. We were over at the Grand Floridian, and this was such a magical day. We got on our bus from our resort, which was All-Star Movies, and we asked the bus driver when we got on the bus how we would get over to the Grand Floridian, which is very easy to do. You really just get off the bus, and you can get on the monorail. And he just said to us, he goes, you know what? I'm going to take you right there. And so they, he dropped everybody off at Magic Kingdom, and he drove us over to the front of the Grand Floridian, which I thought was amazing. I don't think that happens very often, I'm sure. But he must have been switching his route or something like that. So that was nice. Um, so we saw Mary Poppins and the Mad Hatter and Alice in Wonderland. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, Tigger and Pooh again at this breakfast. So this is over at the Grand Floridian at 1900 Park Fair. And it's a great character breakfast. It is, um, I, I do prefer it to a lot of the other ones. Um, and everybody had a great time. So while we were at the Grand Floridian, we had decided we would surprise the kids with their own spending money that they could buy. We were hoping that they would want to buy their ears with. And if you go on Disney, or I think it's now it's called shopdisney.com, they have hundreds hundreds of different gift cards that you can get. Um, and they ship them to you for free. I think they ship them all. This was like the it came in a card. So we, um, I kind of picked ones for each of the kids. Um, one was, uh, she loved Belle. So we got her all the princesses. The other one really loved Cinderella. And she ended up getting Cinderella ears while we were there. We happened to be going over Mother's Day. So I gave myself $25 on a Mother's Day gift card. My husband and I, our first date, we watched Lady and the Tramp. So I got that one for him. And my son is a goofball. So he got something with Goofy. But just know, um, if you wanted to give somebody something um, to take on a trip or to spend on a trip, this was uh, it's a nice way to do that, and you can get something really unique for them. They had Father's Day. They have all sorts of celebration ones. So we gave them to them after we finished breakfast. We were walking around the Floridian, and we just kind of decided that was the time to tell them that they were going to get $25 to spend. So, oh, boy. Cut that out on a cricket. Um, okay, just goofing around from the Grand Floridian. We took the monorail over to Magic Kingdom and we had a super day. So this is talking about the Astro Orbiter, which is not fast pass. So if you want to do Astro Orbiter, do it early in the day. Um, Splash Mountain, which of course turned out to be the kids' favorite, favorite um, ride. And uh, we got some, we did not buy the photo package at that time, which I will tell you now you should do that. Um, so this was um, some pre-printed scrapbook paper that I had in my stash. Uh, teacups, the carousel. The kids just love the carousel. So I just thought this was a great place to put these pictures. Um, oh, okay. So before the movie Brave was released, we were at Disney World. And so we got to, this is where, um, you know, I had, of course, consulted all my Disney expert friends. And they said, you really need to go to Storytime with Ballard can't remember what it was called at the time, and they told me exactly where it was, and we got there, and I'm like, why is this closed off, and why does it say, why are all these banners for merit? Like, I don't get it. Well, it turns out the movie was going to going to be premiering several weeks later and they had brought Merida to Magic Kingdom and they had a special new meet and greet and so we waited in line and they would let um, families in probably about 10 uh, families at a time or so and all these Disney executives were lined up along the back wall and kind of observing and, and seeing how this character interaction was going you know they were the, oh they wanted us to take these pictures with these bears we did the movie wasn't even out we didn't even know who <laughs> 
it people were um but it was it was really a unique experience and when the movie came out then the kids were like oh we already met her so that was a lot of fun and i don't know if you could see on here but this is a nice hidden mickey on each side we took a picture of the hidden mickeys it was the line was great they had a little archery thing for the kids to do and coloring and and she was just so much fun so this was fun because she was not even in really in existence in you know the real world at that point um okay so a postcard that i bought um, the, you know, snacks that we got to eat. Well, I got to finish this. This is our, it's a small world. I think I just need to find some things to fill in those spots. So I know I just need to go back and, and find a couple more character pictures to put in there. Um, more of our daily kind of thing. I have a picture of my parents <laughs> in this same thing from when we, when we went, when I was a child, uh, something about, I need to put a princess checklist in there. Got to go back and finish it. And this was like a holographic postcard that one of the kids picked up they wanted to keep it and of course meeting tiana that was a lot of fun all right princess dinner so of course um most people want to go to cinderella's royal table which we did not do on this trip we did eventually do it but a great alternative not to dining credits is the um princess dinner over at asker shush in epcot so um at this point in time you were still able to get a picture um printed out now they've changed it it's all digital and things like that but um of course the kids got dressed up evan was peter pan and we had actually i think it's a it's a barbie costume i think and then um Cinderella and again you know your kids don't have to get dressed up but why not it was so much fun they felt like princesses you get a cute photo um, and then this is the roof of one of the adjacent things so it's kind of neat to show the kids that and this was like a Jolie's it's like a 3d sticker so um, we did enjoy Akershush um, well most of us enjoyed Akershush Evan was a little distressed because Cinderella did kiss him on the cheek and um she was, uh, he was a little overwhelmed, I think, at that point. But they do a cute little parade where they uh, take the kids through the restaurant. But she was just lovely. The kids enjoyed it so much. We also got to see um, uh, Ariel, uh, who's my favorite princess. So I did have to jump in for one photo. And she was really funny because she told, she took a special interest in Evan. This is what I finally journaled, um, also known as Peter Pan. And she taught him to crow like Peter Pan. They spent several minutes practicing and crowing at the top of their lungs and she gave him special instructions to tell peter pan it was her who taught him to crow when they met mommy also got her picture taken with ariel because it's her favorite princess so uh later in our trip we did meet peter pan and this so evan did remember this and he did tell him it was really cute so um again this was uh some paper that i had in a disney paper pad and i just mounted it and added some stickers all right pretty as a princess we also saw aurora at this same dinner and so they all got their pictures taken with uh, aurora so this dinner just so you know um, a lot of people say that the food is terrible you need to understand two things about this dinner one um it has a uh, a Scandinavian themed um, appetizer kind of little buffet and then you will order your individual meals and then it's um, I think it's like a shared kind of dessert platter at the end and again this was several years ago I would of course uh, you know research it one more time before I advised you but this is what it was back then and I would tell you just don't you know the food is overwhelming you don't need if you don't care for the cold fish or the cheeses on that early um, on the appetizer part of it don't worry about it. I think the experience with the princesses is absolutely worth this as a as your princess um, meal, which is great. If you can't get into Cinderella, Cinderella's royal table or you don't want to spend all that money uh, or this dining credit because it's two dining credits, this is a great alternative. Oh, and we also met Snow White on that at that dinner. Um, oh, and here's something I need to do with Peter Pan. Oh, I was probably going to put the rest of that Peter Pan story here. Animal Kingdom. I love Animal Kingdom. I think um, so many families overlook it, and I don't understand why. It's great. It's especially great for younger kids. Um, so here we are there. Um, lots of, they have little statues everywhere. Um, this guy, we had just come out of doing a character meet and greet, and the kids were standing around this flagpole, and then he starts singing, kids hanging around the flagpole. And he's like, and I was like, oh my gosh, he's singing about my kids. So you know, so many fun layers of, of things to do there. We did a character lunch, I think it was, at Tusker House. 
which is another one of my favorite um, kind of uh, character meals to do there. Um, you can do breakfast, lunch, or dinner there. And for lunch and dinner, it does feature um, some African types of things. And again, it's a buffet. You can get all your kid meals, um, you know, kid nuggets and chicken uh and mac and cheese, but there's also some great desserts to try, and they do a little musical thing. So um, while we were waiting, um, I think you get your picture taken with Donald Duck uh, outside. They have changed that since then. He does not meet you outside any longer. But every year we go, since we've taken this picture, we take this picture over and over again. The masks are still there, and the kids make their scary faces, and we take a picture. Um, so they do a little musical thing. They take the kids through the dining room, which is so fun, and you'll meet Donald, Daisy, Goofy and Mickey Mouse there. So and oh, they're all just so gracious. And um, we had a, a lovely time at, uh, at Tusker House. Oh, back when they did the Jam and Jungle Parade, they do not do this parade any longer at Animal Kingdom. It was so much fun. Um, I think we saw it twice. The second time we did learn the, it was hard to see. Um, so, uh, but that was a great parade. They used to switch it over for Christmas time and do a similar one, but they don't do that any longer. Of course, you need your Tree of Life photo. So this is from the back side. This is on the other side, closer to Harambe Market. Um, and then this, I think, was taken from uh, the front side. But all the animals that are carved into that tree, it's amazing. So uh, we do like that one. This was probably taken, a PhotoPass person we just handed our phone to, and they would take it, um, which they're always happy to do. Uh, more things. This, I think, was at the, the conservation station or, or something like that. And then Allie was too short, so we were waiting. Um, she could not ride Cali River, so Sean took the other two, and we just kind of hung out. And there's all sorts of photo places there. Uh, there's a big drum area where you can, you know, play with the drums. So we did bang on your drum all day for this one. And first, Mickey Mouse ice cream. So uh, Allie was too short to ride on Expedition Everest. And I can't believe I have not put this in the scrapbook. I'll have to go back. She was too short to ride. So I said, that's great. We're just going to go get an ice cream bar. Well, Evan, my son, was also too short to ride. And he was devastated. And he cried. And he, um, the attendant was so, so nice. He gave him a little piece of paper, which maybe you'll see in the next scrapbook. Um, that it was a little, like a fast pass. And it said, when you're tall enough, to ride this, bring this slip of paper back, and you will go to the front of the line. And I will tell you, I managed to hold on to that sucker. I think it was for three years before we, were, we went back, and he was able, when he, we went back, but he still was not tall enough to ride. But we went back like three years later, and he was tall enough to ride in 2015. So I saved that. We had, of course, scheduled a fast pass for that. So we went up, and he used his little paper ticket, and um, we got to ride right away, and then we went back and rode with our fast pass. But Allie got an ice cream bar while Evan pouted and cried that he was too short to ride Expedition Everest. Uh, all right, one of my favorite things in Animal Kingdom, if you don't go to the Lion King show, oh, I don't know what to tell you. And, of course, I probably still need to put a title up here. But this show is fantastic. It is Broadway quality. You are right in the heart of the action. And if you want to figure out how to get to be in the show, like my son was, if you book your trip with Rumi, I will tell you our secret because it worked every time after this trip. So it's a great, it's a great show. Another great show also at Animal Kingdom is the Nemo show. And you, you hear puppets and you're like, oh, this is going to be weird. It's amazing. It's a really great show. So that is the Finding Nemo show. And then we finally go to Hollywood Studios. Um, back in the day when they had the hat, the hat is no longer there. Um, Mickey's Monterey Railway is now in the Chinese theater behind it. And they also used to do a Pixar Pals parade, which they unfortunately do, uh, do not do any longer. And, of course, the Streets of America no longer there with the Osborne lights. So lots of changes. Uh, there was a stunt show that's also no longer there. Um, Evan did not care for it. It was very loud. Um, and the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom uh, show, which I will tell you, we have done this later on another a trip that I'm going to scrapbook. And I got to meet the characters and Evan got to have part of uh, Indiana Jones's whip. It was amazing. The characters there are, are so gracious. So that's a great show to see. Uh, we did 
uh, buffet, which is the Disney Junior Play and Dine. It has since been changed to Mickey and or to Minnie's uh, seasonal. I think it's breakfast is still this, and then lunch and dinner is with Minnie Mouse, um, and it changes seasonally for the different themes Um, because I know we did one once right when they switched it over and we got to be there for the Halloween one and she was in her Halloween costumes so that was a lot of fun more characters more autographs and of course the bell show um, at Hollywood Studios was a highlight the kids did love that it's a great place to cool off get some ice cream before you go in there and sit down and watch that show um, this was back at our hotel. As I said, we stayed at All Star Movies. Back in the day, your package used to come with a $5 arcade card, which is probably the only reason why we were in the actual arcade. And we just went for maybe half an hour after um, one night coming back from the hotel before we went back to our room, which was located in the Toy Story section. It was a preferred section of the hotel, so we were not that far um, from the main entrance, which was great. Um, the cute little Mickey towels and things that they would leave you. This was the little overview map that they gave us. This was the vacation booklet that comes um, before your trip. Another one of those lenticular uh, postcards that kids wanted to keep Allie asleep <laughs> after we got back. Um, don't discount spending some time in your room. I know you're there and you've spent so much money to be there and to be uh, uh, in those parks, but your kids do need a break, so do let them have a break. Um, uh, some little things. They gave us a couple of little characters when we checked in for our first trip, and I actually had brought one from home. And because at that time Allison wasn't on the, officially on the reservation, um, they had, thought we just had two kids. I'm sure if we'd had three, they would have given us three, but I had brought one from home. These are those Cinderella ears that she bought with her gift card. Um, and again, just some more fun photos around the hotel. They have all sorts of little character things that you can stop and take your pictures at. There's a playground. Don't overlook the playground. Kids just want to play at the playground. Um, this was uh, where we were staying was near the um, uh, Andy's room. This is what it says up here, Andy's room. And so one morning, I wrote, journaled this. Don't forget to journal. You will forget. One morning, Evan exclaimed, Mom, I had a great night's sleep in Andy's room. We loved the larger-than-life theming of this hotel and the fun playing of the playing on the props. So there was, it was a great hotel. Um, I think on our last day, we did meet uh, Donald in Frontierland at Magic Kingdom. So I need to put a headline in here. And then this was the end um, of our trip. They had put this... Uh, in our room at one point and this was just our last morning at magic kingdom she's like a super famous disney cast member who sings if you get to ride on her um antique vehicle i will tell you in the morning if you get there they usually only do it before 10 a.m but if you want to i know everybody wants to walk down main street you should do it at least once but you should also get on one of these antique vehicles that will drive you all the way. Oh, this is from the train. They'll drive you all the way down to the castle and drop you off. There's a fire truck. There's a double-decker bus. There's a couple of other antique vehicles. And it's it's such a great experience. It's so much fun. I do encourage you to try that. So, anyways, that's it. That is from my first um, mostly complete Disney album. It is close, more closely done than any of my other ones. It is from our very first trip that we did as a family with the kids. Um, again, I am a uh, travel agent. I am more than willing to help you plan your Disney trip. Uh, my services are completely free. Any price that you see on the website is exactly what you pay through me. And I do watch for discounts. I do um, give you free touring plans and I do do your fast passes in your dining if you want uh, want me to do that. If you like to do that, I'm perfectly happy to let you do that. I do have clients who are like, we just want you to book it. You can, um, we'll just do the rest on our own. Whatever level of service you want, I can help you with. But I hope this kind of gave you a nice little um, preview or an overview of what types of things you might be able to do on your Disney trip. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye-bye.